Hi, I'm Julian Sprung from Two Little Fishies, and I'm going to talk to you today about the use of calcium hydroxide, otherwise known as Kalkwasser, which is a German term. Uh, some people prefer to use the English translation of Kalkwasser, which is lime water, but I think that that's kind of confusing because I think for most English speakers, lime suggests that green cousin of the lemon. Uh, so the marine aquarium hobby has, has taken on the, the German word Kalkwasser as, as kind of a standard. Um, so what, what is this substance, calcium hydroxide? It's basically burnt limestone and um, in a purified form it makes a good supplement for aquariums where you're growing corals because it supplies um, calcium in a balanced form uh, with alkalinity. Uh, I think some of the chemists will say, ooh, we didn't quite get that exactly right. Well, it doesn't disturb the balance in the aquarium. And the, the hydroxide added has some additional benefits. It elevates the pH of the aquarium temporarily, uh, helps to counter uh, acidification in that sense. It also precipitates um, metals, um, so hydroxide ions added to the water can, can help control any uh, accumulation of some heavy metals in the aquarium um, to a limited extent, but it, it is one of the benefits. It also enhances protein skimming in the water, uh, which is, is beneficial for reef aquariums that utilize protein skimming. Uh, there's an effect of that pH elevation that makes the skimmer work a bit more efficiently. Um, it's not the most efficient method of adding calcium ions to the aquarium because calcium hydroxide is not highly soluble. Only a certain amount will dissolve in fresh water that you use for uh, top off for making up the water that evaporates. Um, calcium chloride is much more soluble so you're able to add more calcium ions with a solution of calcium chloride, but it's not a balanced solution. You have the chloride ions that are added as well, and there's no alkalinity added with a, a solution of calcium uh, chloride. On the subject of adding alkalinity, the calcium hydroxide itself uh, does not uh, add alkalinity, but what it does is it um, combines with dissolved carbon dioxide in the water, and it, it in effect, it, it grabs CO2 and, and it does the addition, if you don't over add it, uh, don't add too much calcium hydroxide at once, um, it will elevate the alkalinity in the aquarium and, and do so in a balanced fashion. First of all, who the hell knew that you could add calcium hydroxide to an aquarium? Where, where did this all begin? Um, well, there's an answer for that question. It all began in Germany. Uh, with Peter Wilkins. Now when I say Germany, he is German and he, he ran a shop called Wee Wee Aquaria, which has a funny connection with Cockwasher, doesn't it? Um, Wee Wee Aquaria was in Switzerland, uh, in Winterthur was the name of the town, and Peter uh, was an avid hobbyist uh, way, way, way back in the old days, and he really is the father of the reef aquarium hobby. Uh, I, I think, sure, there were other hobbyists in, in different places in the world that, that may have kept live rock and, and did some experiments with corals. Uh, Lee Chin Eng, of course, in, in Indonesia comes to mind. But uh, the modern hobby of reef keeping, the Berlin system, the idea of using protein skimmers, uh, adding kalkwasser, adding strontium, iodine, iron, all of this was worked out by Peter Wilkins. And he inspired uh, a large group of hobbyists in Berlin, which is why it's called the Berlin Method, for those of you who are familiar with that. Um, but Peter Wilkins figured out that adding kalkwasser uh, was really a very simple, cost-effective, and very useful way to maintain a, uh, a reef aquarium for growing corals um, and worked out all the reasons, one of which I forgot to mention. Um, in addition to elevating pH 
and enhancing protein skimming and helping to precipitate um, heavy metals. Uh, the addition of Kalkwasser also helps to control phosphate levels and it does so in a couple of ways. Of course, enhancing protein skimming is one way to uh, help with controlling phosphate levels, but calcium hydroxide um, does precipitate some phosphate from the water. It won't uh, eliminate all phosphate, but it does help uh, reduce it. So uh, the daily addition of, of Kalkwasser is one way of helping to manage um, phosphate levels. And then you could say by association, it's one way of helping to limit the growth of algae. Uh, so it's common to hear people tell you if you've got trouble with cyanobacteria, or if you have trouble with uh, dinoflagellates to try to elevate your pH by dosing Kalkwasser. Uh, sounds like it's a cure-all. Um, I don't know that I would call it a cure-all, but it, it is definitely one of the tools uh, that I, as a longtime hobbyist, use to help uh, maintain the stability in an aquarium. I rely on it. Um, now Richard was reminding me to uh, mention that other uh, hobbyists, I'm not the only one, uh, I'm not the only holdout here using Kalkwasser. I think uh, most of the uh, famous hobbyists who are uh, maintaining coral reef aquariums for, for many, many years now uh, also continue to use it. Even if they have uh, a calcium reactor or if they use a two-part supplement, and even Joe Waiulo at the uh, Long Island Aquarium and Exhibition Center who has a 20,000 gallon reef aquarium. Uh, he uses a very large calcium reactor, but he doses Kalkwasser daily because of all the benefits that I mentioned. And Joe, I think Richard's going to send you that check in the mail. Okay. In aquariums that have a very large population of, of stony corals and coralline algae, sometimes the addition of uh, Kalkwasser is not enough to keep up with the depletion of calcium and alkalinity. And in that case, you need either a calcium reactor or a two-part solution like sea balance where you have a, a much stronger ability to supply the calcium ions and, and uh, supplement alkalinity. Uh, so I, I think it's important uh, to consider Kalkwasser as beneficial for most uh, reef aquariums even if you're using another form of calcium and alkalinity supplementation because of the other benefits. Um, you know, adding it especially at night, you have the ability to boost the pH when it otherwise would be falling um, because of respiration in the aquarium. Of course, an alternative to that is to use an algae filter, a turf filter, or a refugium that's illuminated at night. Uh, that method um, pulls CO2 out of the water and, and therefore elevates the pH. As I mentioned, Kalkwasser addition also pulls CO2 out of the water. Um, and the, you know, the hydroxide um, very rapidly raises uh, the pH in the aquarium. So you can dose it with a timer or with a, um, you could have even a pH meter that measures the pH and as it's falling it can dose small quantities of calcium hydroxide. Uh, and incidentally, when I say dosing calcium hydroxide, I'm referring to a solution of calcium hydroxide mixed in water. Uh, we'll look at some of that uh, shortly, different methods of adding it to the water. But you can use a pH meter and, and it can maintain your pH at night. Uh, you can use a, a level switch, but that's dangerous because adding too much Kalkwasser to the aquarium will raise the pH too high. And when the pH is raised too high, you'll lose the alkalinity that, that you uh, have added uh, because it will precipitate. When the pH and alkalinity are at the at right levels, you get automatic precipitation of calcium carbonate. I think there, there was one other subject that, that I brought up in a previous uh, video, and I think Richard wants me to uh, bring it up again, right? Yeah, okay. Um, this is a true story. You know, working many, many years at Two Little Fishies, not only am I, you know, the the guy in charge, I also am the one who answers the technical questions. And I get phone calls, I get a lot of emails. I prefer email, email is definitely the way to go because phone calls can uh, take a lot, a lot of time. Um, but there was this one phone call that I got many years ago and the, the hobbyist wanted to know about 
the addition of Kalbwasser. And the thing is, uh, not everybody can say a German word the correct way. In fact, I, when I say Kalbwasser, I'm saying it in an American way. So I'm not talking with a German accent. Um, well, this guy, uh, I, I don't remember exactly where, I, I think he was from maybe um, Alabama or New Orleans, if I, you know, he had a, a, an accent that gave me that impression. He, um, he said Kalkwasser in a funny way. And when, when he asked me the first time, it, it took all my effort not to just laugh. And you know, I have to be serious because I know that the hobbyist is asking me uh, a serious question and I, I need to answer it and not make them feel embarrassed. And, it's just that he referred to it as cock washer. And so he went on and on about, you know, how to use my cock washer. And it just, you know, I think I had tears running down my face as I was trying to, to hold a, a straight face while answering his question. And I don't remember specifically, but he, he, it was having to do with how to dose it properly and not harm his aquarium, I think was, was the main subject. So um, remember, kalk wasser, not cock washer. No, you'll kind of freak people out if you say it that way. Say it correctly. You don't want to embarrass me or yourself. And um, see you next time.